Hey everyone, welcome back to our Love 2D for Beginners series and in this episode we're diving into something super important for almost any game, that is collision detection. Ever wondered how games know when your character bumps into a wall or picks up an item? Well that is collision detection and today we'll learn a basic and popular method called AABB which stands for Axis Aligned Bounding Box. So let's get right into it. So before we code, let's understand the concept of collision detection. Collision detection is how a game figures out whether the two objects are touching or overlapping. And there are many types of collision detection, but we'll start with the easiest and most useful, which is as mentioned before, AABB. That stands for Axis Aligned Bounding Box. It's just a fancy way of checking if two rectangles overlap, and it works great for things like platforms, players, enemies, and walls. So let's set up our scene, uh, we'll now open our main.lua file and define two rectangles, one static and one that we can move. So we'll open our VS code now. And just a quick shout out, if you are learning Lua, you can check out our app on the Play Store, Lua for games to learn and code. It is packed with interactive courses, fun coding challenges and a built-in Lua compiler and step-by-step -step guides to build games like Brick Breaker. It is perfect for beginners who want to learn and practice Lua all in one place. So you can go check it out on the Play Store from Codin, Lua for Games, Learn and Code. Now let's get on with the video. Okay, now as mentioned before, let's define two rectangles first, one static and one that we can move. So first function love.load, we will create a player. And in this we can write its x coordinate this is a player table, so uh, our x coordinate, our y coordinate equals 100. Our width of the player, which will equal to 50. Height of the player, which will equal to 50 as well, so it will be kind of a square. Uh, not kind of, it will literally be a square, so speed equals to 100 since our player can move. And after that, we'll define a box table. And this will have the properties of x equals 300, y equals 100, and width equals 100, and height equals 100 as well. Now we'll end the function. And after defining our player box that moves and a box that stays still, we will draw them. So function love dot draw. We'll first select a color for our player, which will be blue. Um, uh, rod dot graphics dot <laughs> set color. I meant to do uh, set color. Inside that, we'll use an RGB value. So let's say zero zero point five, and then one for blue. Now after that we'll draw the player so love.graphics.rectangle the rectangle will be filled and it will have the position values of player.x and player.y a, a width of player.width and a height of player.height After that, we'll define our box. So, love dot graphics dot set color. We'll define a different color for our box, which will be red. So, it'll be one zero and zero for the RGB values. And then, love dot graphics dot rectangle. Once again, it'll be filled, and it'll have the coordinates of box dot x and box dot y similarly box dot width and box dot height now we'll end our function and if we run our game right now we'll be able to see that we have defined two boxes one for our player and one for our actual box and after that we'll move the player using our arrow keys like we did earlier uh, so for that we'll be using the love.update function 
and function log dot update dt if love dot keyboard dot is down right that is if our right arrow key is pressed then player dot x should increase so player dot x plus speed times dt which stands for delta time and if you're unfamiliar with why we are using delta time in uh, addition to using speed you can check out our previous videos it is basically to balance the speed of our objects according to time and not according to frame rate and if that explanation wasn't clear enough uh, we have explained in detail in previous episodes namely episode 6 so you can go check that out link will be in the description so else if um, our love dot keyboard dot is down and that is left so that is our left key is pressed and then the player dot x that is the position of the player should decrease that is the x coordinate value should decrease if it if the player presses left so player dot x minus speed times dt now similarly we also have to define conditions for our up and down arrow now I'll not type all of it out I'll skip to that part when we have typed it out um, so I have completed the code and what I noticed was there should have been uh, player dot speed instead of speed when I typed it out and I have corrected that in all of the pieces so what I did was I just updated the y values instead of the x values when the a user presses up or down so since the y coordinate should update I updated that y coordinate now if we run our game and see we should see the blue square should start moving when we press the arrow keys perfect now we have to what we have to do is we have to detect when this square the blue square touches the red square or passes it so we'll be doing just that so it is time for the heart of this video the aabb function so it checks if two uh, rectangles overlap using their x y uh, coordinate and height and width so basically the gist is uh, we'll be uh, checking for four conditions so in order to check if the two rectangles have collided or not that is if our player and box have collided or not we'll check for four conditions and we'll be doing that by using their x and y values x y height and width values so we'll be checking if these two rectangles overlap using their x, y, width and height values. So first of all, if these two rectangles touch or overlap, they should be fulfilling four conditions. That is, the left edge of the rectangle, first rectangle, should be on the left side of the right edge of the second rectangle. So it should not be like this. The left edge should not be on the right side of the right edge of the second rectangle so that is one condition the next condition is the left edge of rectangle 2 should be on the left side of the right edge of the first rectangle so this should be on the left side of this so it should be like this at least and the top edge of the first rectangle should be above the bottom edge of the um, right rectangle so this is for checking uh, like vertical collisions as well this should not be true the top edge of our blue rectangle should be above the bottom edge of the red rectangle so this condition should also be fulfilled and the last condition is the top edge of the mm, red rectangle should be above the bottom edge of the blue rectangle so like this so those are our four conditions and we'll be defining if the collision happens or not based on those four conditions. So let's get to coding. Now we'll create a function called check collision. So check collision and we'll be inputting our x1, y1 values and width1 and height1 values. These are for our player and x2 y2 and width 2 and height 2 and we'll be returning true that is return if x1 is less than x1 i mean x2 
plus w2 now what this means is x1 is the I'm sorry so x1 is the starting position or the left edge of our rectangle and what x2 is it is the left edge of our red rectangle but if we add on its width it will be the coordinate of the right edge so this basically means that the left edge should be on the left side of the right edge of the red rectangle and I'll be defining all of the conditions mentioned before so x2 is less than x1 plus width 1 and y1 is less than y2 plus h2 now similarly y2 is the starting or the top edge of our red rectangle and if we add on its height it will become the bottom edge so this basically means that the top edge of our blue rectangle should be above the bottom edge of our red rectangle and all of these must be simultaneously fulfilled and that is why I'm using and 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 um, y2 must be less than y1 plus h1 and that is basically the end of our conditions and after that we'll be using this function in love.update so inside love.update after we have fulfilled these we'll be doing if check collision and then inside player x instead of x1 y1 we'll be entering player dot x player dot y player dot width player dot height and then the x coordinate of the box the x coordinate of I mean the y coordinate of the box and similarly the height and width as well so width and height so if this condition is fulfilled that is if it is overlapping then let's say we print out collision onto the console collision now not only that we can also add a visual reaction for example we can change the box color while colliding now inside love.draw we can uh, use set color to our advantage so let's say uh, first of all uh, after we define our player we say if check collision and then we enter all of this so I'll just copy then okay I didn't mean to copy this so if check collision is true that is if our rectangles have collided then we can change the color of our rectangle so let's say uh, love dot graphics dot set color it will be green so 0 1 and 0 and else it will just be red so else it will be red and will end now that is how we will check for our collision now let's uh, run our code and see so see so you can see that when our blue rectangle that is our player touches or crosses the um, box the immovable box our box turns green so our collision detection is working just fine and that was it for this video we learned what AABB collision is and how to detect a rectangle overlap and how to react when a collision happens. You've just added one of the core mechanics found inside thousands of games. Now before wrapping up, here's a quick challenge for you. You can try adding another rectangle, maybe an obstacle or another item and check for collisions with both boxes separately. You could also make the second box move when the player touches it so you can update its position values if the player touches it um, There is some physics and we can make the player stop moving when they collide as well And don't worry if it is a bit tricky uh, Experimenting is how you'll really understand how collision works and if you complete it do share your code in the comments I'd love to see what you came up with in the next episode We'll be adding sounds and musics to your game so your game not only looks interactive but sounds interactive as well 
If you like this episode, please drop a like, subscribe to the channel for more such videos and let us know in the comments what kind of game are you planning to make with Love2D. And until the next one, happy coding and bye bye.